son of Hal McRae, the skipper of this ball club, swings ballpark. And he has learned a lot from his dad and will continue to learn. Swinging a bit here in the month of August than he was in April. Not just missing outside with that one. It's up last year for 46 games and hit 286 and 168 times the plate. Swing and a miss. Minolta, the question again, only three current Royal players were on the 85 World Series championship team. Who are they? Well, I guessed George Brett. That was my first guess. And I was one for three. Brett say Voice you don't have to make. In the 70s, the Yankees captured two more world championships, led by clutch performances from stars like Munson, Nettles, Guidry, Hunter, and Jackson. And now you can relive those glory days, because on Saturday, August 31st, all fans will receive a set of collector cards featuring every Yankee from the 1970s, compliments of Nobody Beats the Wiz. It's the final installment in our collector card series, so get your tickets now. Well, we'll take a moment to look at some of the upcoming telegasts of New York Yankee baseball tomorrow night. It'll be the Yanks and the Royals. It'll be 8.30 on MSG. And then Wednesday, August 21st, again, 8.30 against the Kansas City Royals right here. And it'll be on MSG. And Friday, the Yankees will be in Toronto. And that game will be on MSG. Our next telecast here on WPIX. They'll be against the same division leading Toronto Blue Jays next Sunday up at the Sky Dome in Toronto, and that game will be a 135 start. For what he has done tonight, he's 0 for 3, but he's hit the ball hard all three times, and he's come up with nothing. You can see Tartable shaking his head. What can I have to do in this ballpark? This is a huge ballpark when you consider. Yeah, uh, Danny Tartable has what he 25 said, he said, home runs. <laughs> You're what he said he said. I I get, get. Yeah, I did. He yeah. had to. He says, what do I got to do? In this ballpark, I mean, this, he smokes this ball, and it's an easy play, not even warning track. And he has 25 home runs at second, and Benzinger will be. And he's shaking his left wrist, and he could have hurt it. Take a look at it on the turf. Oh, he rolled over the top of his fingers and probably twisted his wrist. Good play by Bernie Williams. Hey, Black and Johnny Maestro on the Brooklyn Bridge. Get your tickets now at all Ticketmaster outlets or the Garden Box Office. And so they can see. Hi, everybody. I'm there, here. He's there. I'm here. And it's Joe 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 Look at Joe. You see John Sterling <laughs> waving. What is, what's going on over there? <laughs> How do you like those huckleberries? <laughs> Nothing in one to count. I got prefer you in the dark, Scooter. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad, Mercy. He squares the butt. Yeah, Bernie Williams got his glasses off. Yeah, I wonder if he knows it or if he did it on purpose. I'm sure he knows it. Standard. It is. Ah, oh, that's better than a bunt, or just as good, I should say. Oh man, he almost waited too long. <laughs> Somebody told me that. Hey, that was a lot of English on that ball. One ball, two strikes. I'm surprised that Benzinger didn't charge that a that's little right. bit more. But hey, you know, right. but the, let me just explain why I thought he didn't charge. I it was agreeing with you. Sachs was coming down the line. Now watch Sachs coming down the line. Now Benzinger is charging it like he should to keep it from going foul. Sachs is going to run right by him. Yeah, I guess you're right. If he came in hard, because he'd be going the opposite direction of Sachs. Yep. And Sachs has got that little line, you know, that little square box. You know what that reminds me of? Those two coming at each other. I saw a great. You remember that? Oh, with yes. Warren Beatty, who yeah. plays quarterback for the Los Angeles yeah. Rams. Well, he was. He was on. A, well, I tell you how it reminds me of those two running. He was on a bicycle, going through a tunnel, and a truck came to pass the guy and went right at him. Except that he didn't kill Warren Beatty. Fly ball to center field. Make yeah, not too bad. Yeah, uh, Watch this. I'm still trying to figure out that Warren Beatty. Oh, he could have hit the what? 
you got me a little confused. Oh, all right. Warren well, Beatty it, riding a bicycle, running into a truck, a truck, but he didn't get killed. But he, but the thing is that he didn't run into the truck. This is what's so tricky. But here comes Hal McRae out the truck. <laughs> Heaven can't wait, Jimmy. Heaven, oh, very good. So anyway, who? Mike McNaughty. Oh, okay. McNaughty. There he is. <laughs> you cracking the AD I, up. I know. But you, uh, let me get this story in. Please do. What happened is that when uh, James Mason is up on the waste, that's called, they call it the waste station before you get to heaven. Yeah. And there's a plane waiting for you there. But what they do is just before you, just before you get killed, <laughs> I can't. It's going to take too long. <laughs> a waste station. <laughs> That's, forget it, forget it, forget it. It's just, anyway, it was a great movie. Don Mattingly is one for three, doubled, hit into a double play, bounced to first, and lines one to center field. But right there, McCray makes the catch. I'm Paul Runnels with CNN Headline Sports. After three weeks on the sideline, the Express is back on the mound tonight. Nolan Ryan making the start against Baltimore in Arlington. He's been out with a strained muscle in his pitching shoulder. And guess who is facing Ryan tonight? For the Orioles, Glenn Davis back in the lineup for the first time since April the 26th. Davis went down with a spinal nerve injury. He did not undergo surgery, rather a long rehabilitation period. As for the game, they've moved to the sixth inning in Arlington. Nolan Ryan went five innings. He had seven strikeouts, gave up just two hits, and stands to get the win if the Rangers hold on. Ruben Sierra hit his 17th for the game's only run. Elsewhere, Cleveland and Boston rained out. Hurricane Bob affecting the schedule there. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow. Oakland and Minnesota in a slugfest. Ken Herbeck with a two-run homer tied it up. Mike Pagliarulo earlier hit a three-run shot. Canseco has number 35. Ricky Henderson a three-run blast for Oakland. Robin Ventura's hit number 18 for Chicago. They're hosting Detroit. In Kansas City, Randy Velarde's two-run double has tied it up between the Royals and Yankees. And on the coast, California at Seattle, Kirk McCaskill against big Randy Johnson. Two games in the National, Cubs and Expos are in extra innings. And in Los Angeles, it's the Dodgers and Padres. That's all for Eric Plunk. And it will be Cataray to come on to pitch to Kirk Gibson. He certainly did. Eric Plunk, who has gone six and two-thirds in this ball, just leads it one nothing. Over Baltimore at the end of five. Nola Ryan off the DL pitching in that ball game. Mel Hall, who is red hot, fouls one just into the stands. Up there in the extra innings now. Chicago batting in the top of the tenth. Horrible weather back oh, that's in the right, northeast right, part. Right. Ripped right at the first baseman. Four heat. fastball yet. Back nope. to pitch that he hit him with was a curveball. Right. And it's going to continue to break down. Oh, he see, and I started to say something, forgot what it was. Just aimed the freshman baseball coach at Yale University. Paid a visit to Yale and, and singled Joe out, and Joe was so happy. And the grounder in the hole, he might beat it out. He does beat it out. Good legs by a terrible collision at home plate in the minor leagues and almost almost swallowed his tongue. If it hadn't been Ooh. the uh, trainer and came out and put a piece of wood on back to take her masters. All right, one man out. Kelly leading at first and oh I know I sort of Matt Noakes is 0 for 3. He's hit three ground balls. Two, oh, what a jump. And a swing and a miss. They'll never get him. And Kelly's in with a stolen. Yeah. You got to be kidding. Huh? What? Oh, no. Oh, oh, off the end of the bat. If he had any speed, he might beat it out. But he has no speed. And two. Al. Uh, Kelly had an interview with uh, 
Ouch. Mercy, you want to tell this story? Well, it ha happens the other night when Kelly made that fabulous catch in left center field, right. and he fell and fell right straight on his face, and he hit his face on the turf at Yankee Stadium. He told Trowick that by doing that, he straightened out a crooked nose that he used to have. You got to be kidding. That's what he said. Boy, I'm going to try that because I got a crooked nose. I'd like to straighten out mine. You, you wouldn't want to try to straighten it out here on this Kansas City. No, no, ball, no. Think, would you? Grass, no grip. How do you like that? Low. <laughs> what he at one time the Yankee doctor when we were playing for some reason liked to straighten noses. I told everybody they had a deviated septum. Yeah. And he wanted he went in one and Hank Hank went and said okay straighten it out because he had trouble breathing and he almost died. Not from the operation, but the post-operative uh, part of it. When he, they stuff your nose with cotton, he says, and then, then you can't breathe, and then he started a hemorrhage. Oh. And what happened there? Uh, he walked. He walked. First and third, two outs. First and third, two out. What do you mean, go on? Did he try to straighten your nose out? Yeah, he tried to straighten my nose. Your deviated and I wouldn't, septum. I wouldn't let him. And he, I knew I had a deviated yeah. septum. Of course, Stanky broke my nose twice. You know. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. He needed to come up, and Stanky gets the ball and swings under and hits me right on the nose. That's the Kevin Moss. And the count: one ball, two strikes on Velarde. Scooter continues to tell the stories, and he's mesmerized the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> they won't even hold a player on, so the Yankees taking advantage of that. Runners at second and third now for the Yankees. <laughs> Finish this. Finish. <laughs> Frank Howard, Stump Merrill, and Mike Ferraro, and he called. Oh, man. I'll tell you, that thing must have broke two feet. Called out on strike. Bellotti thought it was inside. You know, before, got I, the I thought that was a shadow, said, yeah. but... No, that's, uh, that's pine tar. Yeah, he, oh, he, I see what he does from the hands to the helmet, huh? Bouncer, Espinosa, low, and Matty Lee's got it. Never did hit the ground, but it's one away. Kind of looks like one of those roughnecks out of the uh, well when they strike oil. <laughs> the oil gets on top of the helmet as it gushes up uh, above the derrick. Not in Brooklyn, out in oh. Oklahoma, yeah. you probably didn't see a lot of that, right? I would just stick with Pine. They know how to manage. Oh, yeah. Man. Although this year, Sweet Lou isn't so sweet. Like you're playing with a spalling high bouncer on the streets. Danny Tartabo with good speed, and Espinosa with that high hop, and he threw a bullet right over the top, but not in time. And Espinosa obviously was playing deep at shortstop yeah. because of the power of Danny Tartabo. So he gets a base hit, an infield hit. Hit number six, Mark Blanchard, is in from Morristown Central School. He wrote me a letter. He told me about Jack. I was happy to hear that because lately I'm reading about all my buddies in the obituary column. And it's not too pleasant, you know. So you get somebody who's up there coaching young kids. And it's nice to hear from the guys that you knew years, yeah, it years is. ago, and then all of a sudden everybody splits and. Yeah. It was good, you know, old timers day, remember? Oh, yes. Great to see them all back there. Fate is still... Use a little bit of judgment there. I mean, he should have seen that nobody could catch that ball. And then after he kicked the ball, you got to be ready to go. And he's got a lot of speed. Well, it's a base hit for Sachs, his second of the night. That'll put him close to 300. Off-speed pitch, and Steve Sachs adjusting to it. Good try by Howard at shortstop. Already there, but Sachs mm -hmm. holding his bat, hoping that it will drop. But Bernie Williams with that ball in front of you, and if you get a little bobble, especially on this artificial surface, you've got to take advantage of it. Yep. And he had already... Bodica. Now, this guy throws a little harder than Bodica. See, Mattingly is double, hit into a double play, bounce to first, line to center. 
away and check. And two. All right. Yeah, I like Matting with this stand up stance much better than the one bending over. Run is going and he hits one high in the air to deep right center. Way back, nobody's going to get it. It's high off the wall. Two runs are going to score. Now that is good base running right there. Heads up base running by Sachs. Holy cow, man, he really creamed that one. High off the wall. Almost a three-run homer, but he'll take the double and two RBIs and the Yankees lead four to two. Just shows you the depth of this ballpark. That ball was hit deep to right center field and just kind of hung up there for a long time. A breaking ball from the left-hander. Carnival on the run, McRae on the run, and just missing by about a foot and a half from being a three-run home run off the bat of Don Mattingly. All right, here is Mel Hall, who's red hot. Sand batter, and it doesn't work out. You're Don Mattingly, you're supposed to deliver in those situations. That's right, you're right there. When I say so, they're down more. They're right down a lot easy. more. And he, we can see now that he hasn't lost any strength since he's lost a little bit of hair. <laughs> very, very good bounce to the left side. Steve Farr now warming up for the Yankees. Mel has walked double twice and lined to first base. Right. That is very unusual for Hall to be caught looking the way he's always cutting. Two men are out. And second and once to first tonight. He had that stroke going for about two months. But lately he's lost it. And there's a ground ball in the hole. What a play! No, he won't get anybody called. Man, two more runs are going to score. He made a great play. Should never have thrown the ball because even if he had thrown it good to Terry Shepard, it wouldn't have caught the runner going down, so it'll be a base hit. <clears throat> Noakes at second. Great play made by the shortstop. You can see right there, stopping the ball and then throwing it away at second. Shepard didn't even make an effort for it. I guess it was so far out of the way yeah. of comfort. But a two-base error. The rookie shortstop, Dave Howard. Started off raucously for the Royals. Kirk Gibson unloading a two-run blast in the opening inning. I just want to see if Kevin Moss had any other stolen bases this year. Yeah, he does. That was his one of his home runs have come against left-handed pitchers. And now with two out, four runs in here in the top of the ninth. Yankees leading 6-2. Nine of the 16 have come off a left-handed pitching. Low. And the bullet up the box, but Sean Dunstan is there to cover the ground and get. Not exactly fleet-footed, Ron Hassey. Top of the fifth is still a scoreless game. Brian Barnes matching Maddox. Now let's, let's see here. He's finally scored on that error. Bottom miss, yes. A lot of times. Pop. Oh, he has. And Dodgers, Jim Belcher, who's been pitching strong lately, giving up less than a run a game in his last three outings, but Jack Howell good, makes it more than one of an ERA in this game. He connects for the home run. That's the only score. Uh, Scooter, Frank had uh, Scooter. Only one in the National League. You just saw it. Jack Howell going deep. Jose Canseco still trying to catch Cecil. He's got 35 now. And check out this new horizontal design. It makes the camcorder easy to use and carry. It's got an 8 to 1 zoom lens, stereo hi-fi sound, even a wireless remote for recording or playback. Need a camcorder? Trust your senses. Pick up a Fisher Ultralight. Available only at nobody. Be He's had five hits and ten at bats. Including a home run. 
batting 500. Um, in the dugout. Now they're they're yeah, now look, all beginning every, to move. Every one of them ready to get out of there. That's the third struck out, bounce to second. Look at see that's the old stick, Mike's. And of course John Sterling uses the old left hand in the ear technique. A lot of the old announcers used to do that. A dirty IFB. <laughs> A used IFB. <laughs> And I have there is just an unbelievable controversy. Headlines in all the papers here. It's just something that should not have happened, should have been taken care of right in the uh, right in their own offices. All right, of course I fell asleep in the Bobby's chair today. Mattingly is certainly a big favorite here at Yankee Stadium. And they're glad he's back in the lineup. Slowed up by the Red Sox, they opened a 10-game homestand with New York, a team they had taken three of four from last week in Yankee Stadium. This will be a tight pitcher's duel this evening, but it started off raucously for the Royals. Kirk Gibson unloading a two-run blast in the opening inning. Yanks came back to tie it in the fourth off Mike Boddicka, though. Randy Velarde connects. That's gapping. It's over. McCray has got a field for a double. Now Hall and Kevin Moss tie the score at two. It stayed that way from the fourth until the eighth. Then on second and third, Boddicker facing his nemesis, Velarde, and Uncle Charlie gets him looking. Still tied at two. Go to the top of the ninth with two aboard. Don Mattingly off Mike Magnanti. And that is going deep, and it's off the wall. That'll double in Bernie Williams and Steve Sachs. Gives them the 4-2 to lead, but they weren't through. Shortstop David Howard made an error. Mattingly came around to score, as did Roberto Kelly. And the Yanks have struck for four in the ninth to make it 6-2. to two. The Royals have only three more games left with the East after they finish the series with New York. Those are coming in September at Baltimore. This one is not going well. Back to the National 